Sounds good when you're ready. Can I just get two stuffed grilled beef tacos? Have a good one. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Swanky Cat Productions channel, where I try to put a snowmobile video out in the wintertime at least once a week. Today we're going to talk about the five, I'm holding five fingers up, the five things that I wish I would have known when I started snowmobiling. Compared to most people, I think I kind of got into it uh, a little late in life actually. I think a lot of people that I know were snowmobiling since they could walk and it, there were definitely some things that I really had to catch up on and I had to learn kind of the hard way and uh, I, I definitely learned a lot of those lessons real quick but I figured it would still make sense to, to share them with you guys and hopefully those of you that have just as much experience as me or possibly way more can let us know if there's anything that I missed down in the comment section so make sure you check that out. The very first thing that took me a, a kind of uh, I guess a lot longer than I would like to admit is that you have to get off the sled and lean to go around a corner flat. If you don't, well, basically then the sled's just gonna kinda try to pick one ski up around the corner and you're gonna feel like you're gonna tip over the opposite direction. I kinda came from motorcycles and four-wheelers, so you would think that you would know that you have to do a little bit of movement if you really wanna ride fast. And, I mean, I guess I did, but the thing is, on a sled, you really, really have to kinda put your back into it and if you don't, woo, the sled's not going to do what you would expect it to. Now that does kind of change depending on the kind of sled that you ride. The more newer kind of rider up position sleds, you have to lean even a little bit more. And depending on suspension setup and whether you have studs or not, and the type of carbides that you've got on kind of can change that a bit. However, it's really something that you just can't avoid. And if you want to have a good snowmobiling experience and be able to keep up with your buddies, you're going to have to get off the seat and hang off around those corners. And hey, it keeps you warm when on, on the cold days. And the next thing that segues into quite nicely, and maybe you've kind of noticed that a little bit already, is suspension setup, carbides, uh, whether or not you have studs, really kind of all works together. Um, and works together with your, your weight and your riding style and what you're gonna expect out of your sled. And right now, my sled definitely needs some single runner carbides, and I will have a video on that later. I'm gonna switch my dual runners over to single that should give me a little bit more bite. You can also mess with all four of the shocks on the sled to, or uh, sorry, not the shocks, the springs on the sled, and I suppose the shocks too, depending on what model of shock you have. And that kind of all changes how the sled rides. And it's just something that you have to get into and you have to learn and you have to figure out. And since we've got a nice ditch here, we'll move into the next two things actually. And that is don't ever slow down and counter steering. The only way to get through stuff like this is to lean the sled over the opposite direction Woo! or lean the sled over by turning the skis the opposite direction that you want to go and the more you turn your tips the opposite way Woo! the more you'll go that way does that make any sense at all Whoa! obviously i'm no expert at this and doing it in the ditch really isn't the best way to go but it's really something that's fun to play around with and something that's good to learn because it'll help you turn around in tight situations. And I know that snow was really deep enough that it would have mattered, but I have definitely been in some ditches and some other situations in some kind of blown over fields where I've kind of came to a stop thinking I could get going again. And this will sort of depend on the type of sled that you've got. Obviously, short track, heavy four stroke, you might, you might want to keep, keep the throttle pinned in, in the deep stuff. 
Now, obviously, you don't want to run yourself into a tree or anything. Which is actually what happened with my Polaris Dragon when I got that stuck. That's, that's a, an old video now. But I was riding in the ditch and didn't get out fast enough. Wasn't skilled enough to counter steer to pull the sled out. And uh, there was a big popple hanging kind of over the ditch. And I got myself good and buried. And once you get a sled buried, the only way to get it out is to dig it out. Make sure you don't have any snow touching anything but the skis and the track. And once you've got a clear path and you get moving, just pin it and keep it moving. Otherwise, you're going to sink and be right back to where you started. What are we on now? Four? Number four is reverse on a sled is really, 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 really nice in parking lots, on a trailer, and on very well groomed hard pack trails. It is completely useless anywhere else. I First time uh, that I got stuck, I figured that I could just back right out of the situation that I had gotten myself into. And uh, that was some, some deep snow in a, in a uh, cornfield where the, uh, the trail had gone uh, a different direction and you couldn't see it because of all the drifted over snow from all the, the wind. And I had been following somebody else's tracks who also went the wrong way. So when I realized that I could see a trail sign just off to my right, I figured oh, I'll just flip my sled into reverse, back myself up, turn myself around and get going the right way. Not at all the case, and uh, I guess that's a, a bit of a bonus one, is it doesn't hurt to bring a shovel. Um, you, you're probably going to have to dig yourself out eventually, and uh, that day I, I definitely did not think I was going to get that sled out of that field. That, uh, that was interesting. Another thing that I am just starting to learn, uh, or I guess continuing to learn, is that maintenance on a sled is very, very important. Now, if you've got a two-stroke, things are going to be a little bit different on my sled being a four stroke here all I really got to do is change the engine oil and change the gear case oil and was supposed to do it once a year um, <clears throat> sometimes I wait longer than that but it's all going to kind of depend on how much you ride a two stroke you might have power valves you got to clean all stuff you can find in your owner's manual or online uh, but something that I had kind of always neglected purposefully uh, just because I didn't want to have to learn about it is the skid and on a, on a car on a four-wheel on a motorcycle you've got nice squishy tires and cushy suspension that kind of keeps everything what's the word I'm looking for isolated from all the bumps and everything you run over on a sled you've got the suspension but you think about it your whole back skid area I mean that's that's getting pounded day in and day out and you don't have squishy tires to help cushion the blow so it's definitely something that you want to take a look at at least once a year now you don't necessarily have to pull it out every year but I think that's something that I'm gonna start doing just this year I had to put a new front and rear shock on the skid uh, I also needed a whole bunch of other wear parts. Those are things that hopefully you won't have to replace every year, but you should always be kind of taking a look at your slides, at your, your carbides up front on your skis, checking to make sure your shocks aren't leaking oil, checking that your other wear parts like the, the little bushings that your rear big coil springs slide around in. It's all stuff that could definitely leave you stranded out on the trail, or, or at least even just make for uh, a less uh, enjoyable season if you're sitting out waiting for parts. I hope I still got my lunch in my coat. I can't see anything. It's also uh, not really possible to turn on blacktop. That's definitely something that you will learn very quickly. That's a, another bonus thing that I learned uh, probably before I even had a sled actually 
I had a couple sport quads and we would always hit the trails and ride in the lake and stuff and you, you can ride uh, snowmobile trails, certain snowmobile trails, certain times of the year here in uh, Marathon County and Shawano, Shawano County? Maybe you can in Shawano County. I don't think you can in Shawano County. Maybe you can. Anyway, I would always go out and think I was really hitting the corners fast and, you know, really doing, doing good and keeping up with, you know, the other sleds that were out in the trail that were in front of me or behind me. Uh, and then uh, one time I went actually riding with somebody on a sled on the lake and uh, <laughs> I thought we were cruising across the lake fast until they hit the throttle and were just absolutely gone and that wasn't even a fast sled. There is just nothing quite like a sled for acceleration. They are just, just an absolute blast and definitely something that you can get yourself into trouble with but are, are certainly uh, are worth the, the effort and the kind of frustration at times um, through the learning curve to to get through to to be able to enjoy um, I don't know if that made any sense at all but I really love snowmobile and hopefully you guys do or will too and uh, hopefully you can get out here and enjoy this beautiful world that we live in that's what I'm gonna go do I gotta get my lunch out here though and and eat so I'm gonna find a spot to do that and then I think we will call it a day Thank you guys so much for watching hopefully this video was helpful entertaining if it was make sure and give it a like let me know down in the comment box below and if you guys have any other suggestions for new riders make sure and let them know down in the comment box below there like i said earlier if you guys want to see videos like this every week make sure you click the subscribe button click the bell after you subscribe so let's you know anytime i put a video out other than that guys make sure you get out enjoy this beautiful world if you can't though here's some more videos to check out in the meantime take care stay safe and stay swank Bring in the hair. Ooh, look at the hawk.